Ready to learn how you can retarget leads on Facebook, even if you're not using a thank you page for your opt-in forms, then keep on watching. Hi, my name is Hanne from Thrive Teams. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the new feature that we added to the custom HTML element in order to retarget your leads on Facebook. Now, just a little disclaimer here. This is not going to be a video on how to set up Facebook pixels or a beginner's video. I'm actually already assuming that you know something about pixels, that you have the first pixel code installed on your website. And I'm going to show you how you can do this now with uh, the different states in your opt-in forms and how you can use this new custom HTML element. So if you've never heard about Facebook pixels, then probably this is not the right video for you. Now let's have a look. First of all, in our lead groups, I'm going to add a new lead group. Of course, if you already have a form on your website, you can simply use that form. And let's call this Facebook retargeting. I'm using a light box, but you can use any opt-in form type you want. And let's add a form. Here we're using this if we want to A-B test our form. And I'm simply going to set this to zero. So for testing, that's easier. Of course, never do that on a live website because it would show your opt-in form every time you load the page. You don't want to do that. And let's edit our design. So first of all, let's pick a template. And for this example, I want to use a multiple choice opt-in form. And you'll soon understand why I want a multiple choice. Now let's pick this personal branding one. As you can see, this is a light box that will first ask a question to your visitors before showing them the opt-in form. Let me show you what this looks like on the website. So first your visitor would see this, and then if they pick the one that fits them most, they will see the opt-in form. Now, the very first thing I want to show you here is what would happen if after somebody signs up, rather than sending them to a thank you page, we show them a thank you state. Now, the biggest advantage of showing them a thank you state is that you're not sending people away. So if they are reading a blog post, they see this opt-in form, they sign up for it, and then they have the thank you state and they can just simply close that light box and continue reading their um, blog posts that they were reading at that point. Let me show you how to do that. Here you can see in the corner, we have this different state button and we already have a state one and a state two. So this would be our opt-in form for launching my first product and our opt-in form for finding my business idea. And we're going to add a new state. So in this case, let's just add a new state. And this made a copy of our default state. So here, what I would like to do is make this a thank you. Now on this thank you state, when somebody clicks this button, we could attach a PDF to it so that they can download the PDF right from here. But what we really want to do is add that Facebook tracking code so that when somebody signs up and they come to this thank you state, they are pixeled as a lead in our Facebook retargeting pixel. So for that, let's add our custom HTML element. Just drag it on here. And as you can see, you have two ways to choose when to load this pixel. So that is the new feature that we added to this element. And in this case, you would only want to load the pixel when the visitor views this state. And to find the right pixel, let's go to our Facebook events manager here in your setup. You can see when you continue, you have the different events and here you can see the lead event, for example, and this gives you this code. So we would copy this and then add it to our HTML. Now, one thing that I like to do is adding a custom parameter in there because that would allow to actually know for which download that people signed up. So in this case, we can add this parameter. So for example, uh, we can call this download and this would be a launch first product. Now, adding this type of parameter will allow you to be even more granular with your retargeting. So let's save this. 
Now here, as you can see, this changed a little bit our design. So I would definitely make sure that in layout and positioning that we take out the margin here for this element and so on. So you can make sure that this didn't affect um, the preview of your form. So let's save this. If you do this for real, then you would want to set up another thank you state for your other opt-in form so you, you can make sure that everybody is pixeled correctly. But for this tutorial, I'm not going to do this. It's really easy. You just repeat the steps that we just did, and then you change the parameter in your code to being your first product idea. So now what we have to make sure is that our opt-in form actually goes to this thank you state. So for that, let's see which one state one is, I think, our launch product. Yes. So this opt-in form, we want to link it to the thank you state. So in the main options, connect the form to your service. You should already have your API connection set up. If not, we have tutorials for that. And here in the post opt-in actions, we will choose to switch state and we will show them state three. So now let me quickly repeat what happens. From the default state, your visitor can pick launching my first product or finding my business idea. From there, they will go to either one or the other opt-in form. And then from the opt-in form, they will go to the right thank you state. So one default form, two opt-in forms, to thank you states. That would be the total setup for this form. So that would make for five different states. Exactly. So let's save our work and now look if our Facebook pixel is working. Now, of course, this will only work if you already installed the full pixel code on your website. So that's in your, in your header of your website. But like I said, I'm assuming that you already did that. Now, in order to test if everything is set up correctly, I'll go back to Thrive Leads. And I will set the targeting of this opt-in form to the home page. And of course, making sure that we display it here uh, on desktop. I'll also put on mobile just to be sure. And now I can go to the home page of this website. In order to track if Facebook pixels are loaded, I installed this little Chrome extension, which is called Facebook Pixel Helper. It's really useful if you're using Facebook pixels. So I encourage you to install this because in that way you will be able to see what's going on. So already you can see three here. Let's have a look. So as you can see, a page view is loaded, which is normal because the Facebook pixel is on our website. We loaded the homepage. So Facebook tracked that we loaded the homepage. But you can also see that lead has a little exclamation point because it says that this, um, that the code was detected, but it's not activated for this event yet. And that's exactly what we want because people didn't become a lead yet at this point, right? They could just simply close the light box. So now let's see what happens if we click on launching my first product. And if here we add our email address. So as you can see, this worked perfectly to pixel our visitors with these Facebook codes and to make sure that only leads get pixeled with the lead pixel. Now let's take this one step further, because if you've done any publicity on Facebook, you know that the more specific you can be, the more targeted you can be, the better it will be for your campaigns, the less you will pay. So let's have some fun, shall we? From here on our light box, Imagine that somebody sees the light box, is interested in launching their first product, but they don't sign up. At that point, you still want to know that they were interested in launching their first product rather than in finding their business idea, right? So that would allow you then to show them um, an ad that goes maybe to a landing page with a little bit more explanation for this opt-in offer, or maybe you have another opt-in offer that is related to this. But yeah, you can do a lot of fun things. So from here, let's go to our first state. Let's add another custom HTML element. And again, only show this when the visitor views the state. But this time around, instead of uh, tagging people as a lead, I want to tag people as having viewed a certain content. So let's see how that's done in the setup. Let's go back to our events. And from here, let's pick the view content. And in the content type, we will pick launch first product. 
Now this gives us a little bit of code. Let's copy that and add it here in our Facebook code. So as you can see, Facebook will send an event that is called a view content event and the content type is launch first product. Let's save this. Again, I'm just gonna delete the margins around this element so that it doesn't show up. Save the work and let's give this another go, shall we? Let's reload this page. Now, four events are loaded. So you can see that a page view is loaded, the lead is loaded, and the view content is loaded. But again, both of these are having this little indicator that they aren't fired yet, exactly what we want. Now, when I click on launch my first product, you can see that the view content was launched and that we sent the uh, content type launch first product. And then from here, Let's sign up. And now we have a page view, a lead and a view content exactly like we want. Now let's go to a Facebook pixel dashboard because one thing that we can do from here is create custom audiences based on those pixels that we just installed. So let's create a custom audience. Let's choose that we want this based on events. Let's see our view content event. And then we want to refine it by the parameter. So here we can define it by content type. And this one has to contain the text of our content. So in this case, it would be um, that it has to contain the product, uh, first product launch, for example. And at that point, you can create this audience and you can show ads targeted to this audience. Now, I hope you like this new feature in the custom HTML element. As you can see, it opens up a lot of fun things for your lead generation forms and for using this very specific targeting. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, leave them below the video and I'll be happy to answer them for you.